Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are Priscilla Steele and Craig Campbell, <laughs> uh, longtime friends in so many, many different areas, proprietors for many years of the Campbell Steele Gallery. You may remember Liars Holographic Radio Theater, and uh, now the two of you have embarked on a, uh, on a new project, a, a, a book. Um, Priscilla, you start by telling me how this project came about. It actually came about because our orthodontist had gotten art from Campbell Steele, and he was thinking that he needed to add something else, and Craig proposed a mirror with art in it. Okay. And Craig designed a beautiful hand-wrought mirror with how many panels, Craig? 20 paintings and a big bevel glass mirror. Right, and it was a beautiful walnut mirror that hung gloriously in Willie O'Lean's office and was surrounded by paintings that illustrated the use of tension exerted on the teeth of the Sphinx, the Statue of Liberty, a pug, a crocodile, a classic Greek sculpture. An these astronaut. Were, an astronaut, the sun. the sun and the moon. And these, um, the ways of generating tension were cables that were machinated by a uh, scientist and his dog at the center of one of the panels flanking the mirror and uh and these and this was the part that you created i did yes, the panels i just you know craig had the whole concept when he created the mirror he knew exactly what he was going to do and as all of craig's projects there there was an absurdity to them there was something irrepressible about them and or the ideas and i thought i can run with this this would be fun this would be fun this is not unlike uh when i followed craig into his theatrical designs <laughs> so it was just like yeah here we go um and the illustrations of those ideas are colorful and in a totally playful style that i think match the narrative voice of craig um and Craig's voice is, it's been likened to Monty Python uh, twice in this series of discussions that I've had with other people about uh, the book. At the same time, uh, Craig's voice is very much his own, and the um, writing is driven by that sort of um, over-the-top, really um, happy <laughs> voice uh not falsely happy genuinely this is going to be fun isn't it <laughs> if you're watching the video you've already seen the title to the book but uh for those just listening on the radio it's entitled a history of orthodontics through time and space and uh, craig so uh priscilla provided the uh the illustrations and the narrative not surprisingly was up to you um well it's not you know people oftentimes want to separate us into what Craig did and what Priscilla did. And it, it's a little harder to explain if you want to get to the actual truth or the essence of the relationship. We've been working together for 47 years, so it's not as simple as that. It's, we, we work together. We live together. We work together constantly for 47 years. And so nothing happens because of just one of us. Sure. Neither of you work in a vacuum. Never. <laughs> no. Never. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> and so diplomatic. <laughs> uh, so when did the idea for putting this, you know, these illustrations that were part of the mirror now hanging in Dr. Mm -hmm. Olean's office, right. when, did it, when did you have the idea of making that into a book? Well, almost right away, to tell you the truth, as the project was going on, it, it's a very... Uh, involved large project and the result of the large project was a simple single piece hanging in a single orthodontics receptionist's office so a, f a handful of people would see it and it's a much larger idea than should be in just a, a small private area so I think we had thought about uh, using those paintings for other projects including a book ever since we did the original uh, full-scale piece um, and I think that Steve Semkin at 
Ice Cube Press was a large reason why uh, we followed through with the book concept because he's such an enjoyable guy to work with. You know, he was such easy to approach and welcoming of our ideas, and it just kind of flowed right through. So it worked beautifully. Was it difficult to, I, obviously you were inspired or, you know, you created together, you know, the concept of these, you know, the different paintings that then would become the backbone of the book. Was it difficult to decide the order in which things were going to happen? Well, that's an interesting question because the original piece, of course, is designed as a visual piece. When you see it live, the large, it's maybe four feet by five or five and a half feet. Left it's a right. monument. It's a large mirror. piece. <laughs> um, it's strictly visual, so you're 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 putting your own story into it. So making it into a book was a little bit like reverse engineering. So the pieces already existed. Now it's a matter of now how do they go in an order? Because clearly with a book, it's one or two pages. How do you tell this? How do you how do you now how do you tell the story? Yeah, exactly. And or make up a out? story. You know, it's it, it the story is quite different in the book than you could say that it is as a visual piece by itself. Um, and that was, it's, nothing's hard. It's, it, everything is very fun. And it's a matter of uh, laying out the paintings and thinking about different stories to go with the individual pieces. And as soon as you have one comment in your mind, one caption or one idea about what one painting is saying, it's very easy to think, well, if that one's doing that, let's bring this one over here and, oh, look, they're speaking to each other. So it's quite a fun process. That was going to be my next question was, is there a narrative thread that goes through this that ties everything together or is it more episodic or picaresque? I don't know. What is it? I wouldn't use episodic or picaresque. It sounds too literary. <laughs> it's very much in the conversational voice of Craig and uh, if you've ever, you know this, but in any case, I think that it's Craig firing away. Oh, look, and this is happening over here. And yeah, well, I, I think the, I think the core of, if, if there is a, a linear story, um, the core of it is fixing the world. Uh, clearly orthodontics <laughs> is adjusting uh, a specific engineered piece it's a twisting of something so it is very specific to teeth but the concept of the book is fixing the world we're not just fixing a mouth the concept is uh, that uh, craig you've never taken it to that existential level well, that's what that's what it, it starts at the very beginning today's a great day to fix the world that's the way the book begins <laughs> um and uh, buddy and balthazar those are the two yes. lead characters the dog and the man and they are, uh, they set about to fix the world. And it's fun to think about fixing the world. Why, why, <laughs> why aim small? <laughs> uh, is, do you, it's, now, it's a picture book. And, you know, just my quick glance through it shows, you know, there, there's definitely an economy of words. Uh, do you consider this a kid's book or? Well, sure. And it's a book for everybody. It's, I mean, it's, it, I, I, yes, it is. It is a kid's book, and it's a funny book for adults. It's a quirky book for adults. Um, I think that if it has a purpose that can be defined easily, it would be to soften the sense of what a young person is about to enter into when they are about to have their teeth adjusted with orthodontic you know which could be kind of frightening for for younger kids to get started and it's it just kind of takes the mystery away from that makes it more fun sure well look doesn't seem to bother buddy the dog buddy. no it does not <laughs> bother buddy. and why do you think buddy is the dog as opposed to the man um i did i get it right i'm not going to tell okay you to i guess book. you'll have to look at the book to see if i to see i mean I, balthazar yeah. could be a dog balthazar too. could be yes. the dog I, I i did take a quick glance as we were sitting down and i thought buddy was the dog but i could have gotten that wrong buddy was our dog and so i think that it's we had a great dog <laughs> named buddy, so yes of course so yeah buddy's the dog yeah. <laughs> the book is a history of orthodontics it's through the time history. And the, the, history. the it's not one of many yeah. it's not a history it's the well, that all, only if only if you think time proceeds in a linear fashion. You have a point. <laughs> <laughs> the history of orthodontics through time and space. It's from Ice Cube Press. Ice Cube. Uh, Ice Cube Press dot com. Do you have any? I know that we are, you know, we are still not doing a lot of, you know, 
close in events and right. not the usual signing tour or anything like that. Right. But are you giving any thought to maybe doing some public events and readings we, and actually, meeting some people? We did a beautiful signing uh, the other night at Scout of Marion, just around the corner from Campbell Steel in beautiful uptown Marion. And it was very enjoyable. It was people were all careful. We kept a little distance. It was very. It was I great. It. I it enjoyed was great. a great deal. And it was interesting to get people's responses as well. Yeah. They were just delighted with the book. Yeah. Was, so yeah. Well, yeah. What's the what's the most unexpected response you've gotten from someone? Oh, that's someone's cool. reaction to the book. I. Uh, every one of them actually. I. I. <laughs> We, we do things. I do things. Let, let Priscilla speak for herself. I always do things for myself. Everything I've ever done is for myself, to humor myself, to challenge myself. And so when somebody else responds to something that we've done, it's uh, positively, it's very enjoyable. And everyone has responded very positively. So <laughs> we are very pleased. It's, it's a very fun product. I mean, we're, we're pleased with it. It's a great book. You mentioned Scout of Marion, mm -hmm. where it sounds like there are copies, and I'll bet many of them are signed, if not all of them. They are. Uh, they are. Where else can people get it? Amazon, of course, Barnes & Noble, Scout, to name the other, uh, Campbell Steel Gallery, Ice Cube Press, or CampbellSteel.com, IceCubePress.com. Dot com? Yeah, you can. You I should be able so. to order from that website too. Right, you know? right. Have I gotten them all? I and tried we'll drive to one to your house too, if you're with <laughs> Okay, you know, not <laughs> too right. many miles. It's easy <laughs> right. to do. Anyway, yeah, it's exciting to have those people handling the book, it and is. It is. Uh, it's a good emissary out there for us <laughs> lately returned to town. So, yeah. absolutely. Yes, well, great to have you here. Thanks so much for Thank coming you. in and telling us about this. <laughs> and uh, again, the book is The History of Orthodontics Through Time and Space, available in the usual sources or at uh, icecubepress.com. Priscilla, Craig, thanks so much for being here. Thank, Thank you, you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> you can hear The Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.